Hey guys, it's Mike here. Um, welcome to whatever the hell this is about to be. <laughs> so, it is the day before PAX. As you can see on my personal calendar. I'm just uh, doing some last minute checkups on everything. Now, uh, making sure my cosplay's ready. Um, got the map. Actually, if I switch the camera. So we have the swag map this time around. So, it's not as big as uh, last year's, but still pretty large. Uh, a lot going on. But it's definitely a lot more spread out this year, although this tends to be a big cluster around here and a little bit up there. Uh, on the back, uh, this is just... Uh, actually, wait a minute. Um, there we go. This is where it starts alphabetically. So, there was literally everything if my camera can focus everything now, unfortunately these are in red because uh, they were canceled due to Square Enix pulling out its devs big shame but I can understand it and then a little bit more stuff and yeah it's gonna be fun. Uh, I plan to use Friday to hunt the swag uh, because Sunday they tend to run out even though it's a lot quieter that day. Um, sorry that was paper shuffling. Um, I'm also gonna be wearing my cosplay on Friday so I'm gonna be Joker from Persona 5. Uh, actually just today uh, I made this. I made the mask Got some uh, thread, or not thread, but ribbon of some kind to make it wearable. So, that's a thing. Um, yeah, it's still hard to believe that this is already happening. It seems like just yesterday I was working on the swag map for PAX West and letting those kids roam free in Seattle when I couldn't go. Yeah. <laughs> so, I... Honestly, cannot wait. Uh, I guess the goals for this year. Um, meet back up with a few more content creators. Um, some that I already met, like the Runaway guys. And then uh, some new ones that I hope to meet this year. Uh, a couple of the guys from Game Explain are going to be there. Um, Beta64. I plan on visiting his panel. Uh, Boundary Break. Um, who else is going to be there? I don't remember. There's a lot of cool people. Um, and then a lot of people from the PAX community Discord. They want to see me. And I want to see them, so it's mutual. I'm just looking forward to having a good time playing a lot of games. Uh, hopefully I can make my way to console free play this time around. Because my friend is actually going to be enforcing in that area from 8.30pm to midnight. So, without further ado, I suppose I should get on with the vlog. So, allow me to suit up. I am thou. Thou art I. Thou hast acquired a new vow. It shall become the wings of rebellion that breaketh thy chains of captivity. With the birth of the Pax Persona, I have obtained the winds of blessing that shall lead to freedom and new power. I started off the day by checking out some indie games, you know, as you do at PAX, or at least as I do. Uh, I ended up meeting up with Burgos Games, who's working on this 2D, 3D platformer called Nico Goes Jump, which uh, I know that I was a bit confused, 2D, 3D, but the uh, big part of the game is that you can switch between dimensions. So it's not specifically 2D or specifically 3D. Uh, but you change between those in order to complete every level. So, I know it's a bit weird to just have a long video start after I just said that this is going to take the form of a picture slideshow, but I do have some gameplay that was recorded, so uh, here's that, 
If you want to skip the gameplay, then go to this timestamp on screen right now and you'll be taken to the rest of the pictures. Legitimately difficult, but I absolutely love the art style here. Tap, tap. Okay. Tap, tap. There you go. Good job. All right. That's probably actually the hardest level. <laughs> Everyone keeps dying. I'm rage quitting on there. Okay, so those were time coins. Yeah. Interesting. Wait, wait, Ryuji? Wait, he was here before me. I'm Joker. <laughs> That's really funny. I'll just uh, stick with the first level. For oh, now. you gotta try a second level. Second level is the best one. Yes, all right. <laughs> well, okay. That was interesting. I'm a murderer! <laughs> I started off by making a beeline for the huge booths because, well, I didn't really have a plan of what to do that day. Friday was a lot of just exploration of the expo hall, so I didn't exactly go to many specific panels or do many events, but I did end up at the Discord booth and they had a cool little background to take a picture at. I also ran into some Joker cosplayers. Uh, this one right here was pretty cool. He actually had like the full-on outfit. Meanwhile, I had a uh, a budget cosplay put together, um, and it was pretty cool. A lot of people told me looking cool, Joker, uh, which is a Persona 5 reference. So it honestly made me so happy that my costume was effective enough that people could actually recognize me, and it was just so fun to act like Joker. I ended up running into a Futaba cosplayer at the Jackbox stage, and of course I had to take a selfie, because I had to find all my fellow Phantom Thieves. And honestly, I'm a sucker for Futaba as a character, she is like one of my favorites because she's so introverted and she is a precious cinnamon bun, and just yes. Yes, that sounds weird, and no I'm not gonna cut that out of the video. I also met a YouTuber, Austin John Plays, who makes a lot of uh, news videos around Nintendo games, but he also streams sometimes on Twitch. 
Uh, he's been playing a lot of Stardew Valley and Pokemon Sword and Shield, so I got to actually take a selfie with the guy and just talk to him for a little bit, and he was pretty cool. Uh, he was running a panel about studio equipment, which I unfortunately missed, but I'm just glad I was able to catch him after the fact. I ended up coming across this cosplayer, I guess? I'm not sure if this is really a cosplay, but uh, there was this guy who had this puppet of a goose from Untitled Goose Game, and it was rigged so that um, when the goose was walking, he was also walking, so they were kind of in sync, and he had a little thing that controlled the head, and it was just one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Props to that guy. I ended up running into Beta64 right after his panel. Coincidentally, it was in the same area that Austin John was at, except these pictures were taken an hour apart. So, it was pretty cool to talk to him for the first time, and I've been watching his videos for quite a while. Uh, what he does is he looks at the history of games before public release. So, like, he's looking at the beta, hence the name Beta64, like beta builds and how things change from development to the final release, and it was just cool to just hang out with them for a while. I ended up running into some people from Discord, more specifically the PAX Community Discord, um, and this right here is Kevin. Uh, he was a really nice person to talk to. I actually ran into him at the uh, PAX Rising booth where I played Nico Ghost Jump, and we chatted for a while. We ended up we ended up running into each other a few times throughout the day. So, it was awesome to find some people from Discord and finally put faces to the names. So, I'd say that was pretty awesome. And Kevin, if you're watching this, which I hope you are, it was awesome to meet you and I hope we can run into each other again next year. The second day of PAX, I ran into Slenderman. Um, I'm still going through trauma therapy. Um, send help. I ended up finding Ash Paulson from Game Explain uh, on my way through the convention center when I was just looking for something to do. Uh, I believe I was heading towards the AFK room because I wanted to freaking collapse due to a lack of sleep and coffee. Uh, but it was so cool to run into him and uh, I couldn't talk with him for much longer because he had a meeting with Yacht Club Games, but you know, to just take a picture with him and just Tell him how great his work on Game Explain is was just, well, for lack of a better word, it was great. I ended up finding an on to Comic Geek cosplayer at PAX, and yes, I had to take a selfie because the hair was literally perfect. I friggin' loved it. Uh, this screenshot was from a game called Welcome to Elk, which was at the Indie Mega Booth, and I was playing this with one of my friends from my old high school, and we just had a lot of fun trying this game out, and what the screenshot is from is, uh, you have to put different parts of someone's face onto a balloon to re represent the parents. I didn't quite understand the plot, but I thought it was pretty funny. And in order to move on, you had to click the blue seal, and it was the seal of approval, and I freaking love that. 10 out of 10. This is the other creation that we made. Again, still going through therapy. At the Team 17 booth, which coincidentally was actually next door to my college's booth, uh, they had these giant boxes, and these were all inflatable, and contrary to their appearance, no, you could not sit on them. I got yelled at trying to. <laughs> um, but the funny thing about this picture is that the warning on the box just says bees. So I was asking one of the attendants at the booth whether these boxes had bees or not, and they said that they can neither confirm nor deny. So, next time you go to PAX, be wary of bees, because apparently that's something to be concerned about. I ended up going to Boundary Break's panel, and he was looking at behind the scenes of Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Mario Kart Double Dash, and I believe also Super Smash Bros. Melee. And it was just so cool to look at the behind the scenes in games, being able to see what we're not supposed to see during normal gameplay. And also we saw feet. There's context, but I don't have pictures to support it, but believe me, there was feet. Alright, here we go. They asked me to look inside a Baby Mario's character model. 
And if we take the camera inside, let's just move past Luigi here. You can see inside of his body is his, <laughs> is his texture sheet. Isn't that something? None of the other characters have that for the record. It's just him. So We ended up having a hilarious conversation about it after. And um, basically, let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a video called Top 10 Feet in Video Games because, well, Beta64, let's just say he gave me some inspiration. You didn't hear it from me. At that panel, I ended up running into Derek from Game Explain, and he was in one of the front uh, rows. So I got to take a picture with him, and I also told him that his work on Game Explain was great. I wish I got to meet the other guys and tell them the same thing, but I'm sure they get it a lot. But it was just so awesome to run into him. I ended up running into Artsy Omni right after the panel, and he's the guy who's been making renders of fighters that we want in Smash. He was behind the Rayman leak back in the Smash 4 days. So, be, so to be able to talk to him about how much I loved his work was just a great opportunity. I also ended up running into Chugga Conroy, and at the Boundary Break panel, I was actually sitting right in front of him, which was just amazing. By the way, uh, Emil, I'm not sure if you're watching this, but if you are, I'm sorry if I laughed obnoxiously. I feel like that's a thing that I may or may not have done. I don't know. I'm just generally a weird person. Join the club. <laughs> But yeah, it was cool to run into Chugga Conroy again. This is actually my second time meeting him at a PAX. So, yeah, that was pretty epic. After that panel, I also managed to find Arlo. And no, you're not allowed to ask me if he's a puppet or not. I have been uh, legally conditioned to not reply. So, don't ask. I'm not going to say that the Arlo memes of people drawing what he looks like are accurate, but I'm not going to say they're not. But he was also fun to talk to. Personally, I'm a huge fan of his work and how he reviews games, and he was just so happy to hear that. I mean, look at that smile. How could you say no to that face? After hours on Saturday, I ended up just checking out the Pokemon booth because it was just cool to be able to walk around the Nintendo area without actually having a giant crowd of people. And there were all kinds of Galar region decorations, and it was just really neat. The last day of PAX, I took a picture in front of the PAX East sign, and yes, the camera quality is not my fault. It just naturally looks that terrible. And also, yeah, I know I'm not in complete cosplay, but, I mean, opportunities, you know? That day, I actually managed to get a picture with Pikachu, and he was so precious. I freaking love him. Actually, after taking a picture with Pikachu, I said, catch you later. So, um, I don't think the Nintendo ninjas are hunting me down, but I think they have their eye on me. Um, I don't even know how to explain this picture. I was just walking into the expo hall, and I happened to see this guy selling pictures of toes. Why? The Final Fantasy booth was actually not that full, so I got to hold one of the giant cosplay weapons, including this sword, which was literally my exact height, probably a little bit taller, so that's definitely something for the Instagram page. And I actually got to play Final Fantasy XIV online, and I ended up getting a starter edition, and that's pretty awesome. I also ran to the Platinum Games booth because I wanted to try out the wonderful 101 Remastered. And I've gotta say, it's a pretty solid game. I definitely can't wait for it to come out on PS4, Switch, and Steam in, I believe it's April. Uh, so that's gonna be pretty epic. Definitely gonna be able to stream that too. I don't even know what this was, but it was at the Behemoth booth and it looked derpy so I took a picture with it. Don't ask. So, earlier I mentioned that I was at the Indie Mega Booth with one of my friends from my old school. Well, they actually drew me this picture, and honestly, it still, like, warms my heart looking at this picture. Like, I made someone's first packs that memorable, and it's just surreal that I got to spend that time with them. Like, shoutouts to you. You know who you are. I'm glad I managed to make your first packs as memorable as it was. 
The last day, I was about to head out the expo hall, but I decided to swing by the Nintendo booth one last time, and I happened to run to Hollywood. And Hollywood is the guy who's usually on stage doing all the hype work and stuff, usually throwing out swag into the Nintendo booth crowd, because it's always packed over there. And I took a picture with him, and I was telling him that I love what he does, because honestly, he's like one of the coolest dudes ever. He actually tossed a Nintendo hat my direction, and I freaking love this hat. I wear it practically every day now because I love it so much. Thank you so much for watching my PAX East 2020 video. Sorry that things have been uh, extremely delayed. Um, some recent events, uh, most notably the current health crisis, have drastically changed my schedule. So I wasn't really able to edit and record videos in this long span of time. This was supposed to come out a month ago, but I had to move back home from campus. I had to focus on my academics, and lately I've been getting overloaded with work, and just finding time to balance everything has just been incredibly difficult. But I will say, by the end of the month, things should be back to normal. So thanks for sticking with me, and I will see you in the next one.